everybody, this is VBlue42 from uh, KenwoodForums.com. I'll do another demo video here. Uh, this one uh, is gonna is gonna show you how to load um, uh, custom car icons, if you will, uh, onto the unit. Right here, I don't know if you can see this, but right now I'm using a blue uh, 350Z icon that does not come on the unit. Um, so you have to put that in there. Now, one word of caution, um, this is something that you do at your own risk, okay? This is not a stated feature of the unit. Um, you're not really supposed to be able to do this. Um, there is a mini USB port on the back of the unit. It's uh, put there, its purpose is for the uh, GMT-10 traffic tuner. Uh, however, this unit comes with traffic built in. I don't, I don't know why uh, Kenwood would have put that on there to, to be used uh, with that option. Uh, that's what is stated in the installation manual. Anyway, that's what the mini USB port is for, uh, but it will also allow you access to the file system of the unit, the Garmin files anyway. It won't, it won't let you look at any of the uh, operating system files of the unit. Um, but um, you're going to need a laptop computer for this. Right here, I have a MacBook Pro. Um, you know, I guess you could use a desktop if you figure out how to get a desktop into your car to be able to do this, but uh, clearly a portable computer is uh, best for this option. Um, so uh, the mini USB port, it's on the back of the unit, like I said. It's, for those of you that don't know what a mini USB port looks like, it's going to be the same port that's going to be on most of your digital cameras. So it's a really, really small uh, USB port. Uh, I've got a USB cable plugged into it. Um, in the back of the unit. It stays in the back of the unit and stays in my glove compartment along with my iPod cable when I'm not using it. So it's very simple. Uh, you just plug your USB cable into your computer and you'll get this screen here. It says USB connection detected. Okay. You either select Garmin mode or mass storage. We're going to select mass storage in this case. And then you will see the Garmin drive pop up on my desktop. Okay, it's going to be the second one right there. I also have an SD card in the unit and that's going to be the SD card that mounts on uh, my desktop right there. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the Garmin folder. Okay, and it opens up this folder. I don't know whether you can read that, but the second folder here says Garmin, so we're going to double click onto that. Alright, all we're going to be interested in are the last two folders vehicle and voices okay you can install voices into this uh, unit as well so we're gonna double click on vehicle I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna grab this vehicle file that I downloaded from Garmin and I'm gonna drag it in okay it's gonna copy right, now I now have that vehicle file on my unit here okay also for voices there's a Dr. Nightmare voice I downloaded from the Garmin website. Drag that in there. Alright, now I now have an, an included uh, a new voice on the unit. So at this point, we're pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and eject the drives off my desktop. Now on a PC you do this pretty much the same way. You may have to install drivers or something like that. Uh, I don't use a PC so I don't know. Uh, unplug the USB cable and the navigation will restart. Okay, we're going to go to settings. Let's go to language first and look at our new voice here. So you got uh, voice language Dr. Nightmare. And it becomes an option right down here. Okay, and I'll show you what that sounds like in a minute. And I'm not going to use it, but uh, it's good to play with. Uh, let's go to map. Okay, vehicle change. Okay. Now, let the unit read. You've got a lot more files in here now than you had before. Okay. Um, there's my 350Z. Okay. There's another one I loaded that's going to be an Infinity uh, car, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Now, these take a little while to scroll. 
I don't remember what that is. I've got about 20 images that I loaded in here. There's a website that I get them from. It's not Garmin. And uh, I'll put that in the uh, the YouTube video. Uh, so you guys can know. There's a Civic right there, but it's a sedan. So that's why I didn't choose it. I have a Civic Coupe. So uh, the next one here, I believe, is a Ford Focus. Maybe not. There's a new Camaro. Come on, you. I don't remember what that is. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, new vehicle icons. Kind of neat. Alright, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you this crazy voice here. <clears throat> Find place by name. McDonald's. McDonald's. Line one. Yes. Proceed to highlighted route. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. Stop. Alright, so there you go. That's a new voice. Uh, now, I don't know if you noticed or not, um, with with the, that particular voice anyway, and I guess with any uploaded voices to the unit, um, when you when you open up your, your voice recognition, um, it doesn't verbally tell you what to do like the stock voice will. And that may be attractive to some of y'all. Um, you know, it does seem to talk a lot. Um, let's see here go back and put it back where it was um, so you, you just read the screen and, and it doesn't it doesn't talk to you as much as the the stock voices um, that, that could be a problem um, I'm not going to use that voice so as you can see I changed it back but anyway um, just be aware of that also you know it's important to understand that th this whole thing may void your warranty on the unit okay so you need to be really careful also um, you know Anytime you add something to the unit, you need to do a system backup, okay? It gives you access to the Garmin files. Just drag that Garmin folder. Once it, once it mounts on your desktop, just drag that Garmin folder to your desktop. Make a copy of it. I have a system backup before I did any changes. Uh, that's very important because if you do ever mess something up, um, there is a post in the 9140 forum where somebody accidentally deleted all their Garmin files from their from their. Uh, from their uh, add-on navigation unit to one of the DDX units and uh, presumably can't do anything with it now. So always do a backup before you do anything. If you ever have to send a unit in for servicing, it's probably a good idea to go in and remove what you've added um, because, again, this is not a stated feature um, and it could avoid your warranty. So that's at your own risk. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.